Chris, I'm curious, what what does the panel think? What is Chris Pesman's legacy at U of H? You know, he, he was an alum. He was a former team captain. Comes in, you know, sort of a dream job situation for him. But what do you think people remember most of his, what is it, six or seven years? Underachieving. But what sticks out to me, and I, I really want these skills to bring it up, but what sticks out to me is how underwhelming the – Welcome to the Big 12, what, presentation, celebration, that, 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 that was just. You didn't like the virtual toast? Oh, that was just so underwhelming. And I was watching <laughs> BYU's, what they did for their celebration, it just blew hours away. And it was at 12.02. They didn't even hit uh, it at midnight. Right. Yeah, they didn't yeah. hit it at the, 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 the deadline. You know, that's a perfect example because you look, you know, and I, I know you guys don't like to, or Brian doesn't like to hear about the school down down 71, uh, but they're doing the big SEC bash. Houston should have done some version of that. I don't care I it's on 4th of July weekend. I yeah. don't care that you have this logistic. Find you a sponsor. Get you some money there. Have a little street festival, whatever. There was absolutely – you couldn't even buy a legitimately nice T-shirt that yep. had Big 12 on it the day that, the, uh, the, uh, that it became in effect. And to me, that was just embarrassing. And then, you know, the whole – I know that there was the licensing stuff with the, the blue jerseys and stuff, but that was another marketing uh, gap where you, you could have cashed in on some money that you just weren't ready for. Uh, so, you know, there's just some things that, uh, to me, th- this school has gotten in its way more times than gotten out of its way. Yep, and, and we call that cooking it. We, we've cooked <laughs> it too long, and that's a problem, and that, and that has to change. And another thing that hasn't changed, and all this plays into the media part, me being an alum and going through the media athletics department and continuing to see how they operate, it's been the same. And I, I, I social media, I see other programs and how they market, how they operate. They're missing the marks and so much on social media and how they lack to have a better presence and be able to market on social media. The videos they put out, all the different aspects of things that they're not allowing fans to see what they want to see they're missing out on really um viewing the media as another way of revenue because if you market your media the the, their youtube channel all those different things can be ways to really really cash in and generate revenue if you really really use it the right way and put a lot of content out i think they're doing a better job of that stuff i think they're making within the past year they've improved tremendously for sure and there's more strategy behind it uh football is doing stories and and different things and basketball has has really done a great job with creative over i would say the last couple of years um it 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 probably not on that higher level but that's just because there's not the same amount of money uh i mean you had an SID here, um, Tyler Pig, who left to go do just stuff like that on social media for a yep. And when you leave the top job to go to a kind of a second tier job, well, there's a reason for that because they just spend more money. There's more creative opportunities. And it's always going to be that way. There are ways you can do it in basketball showing that blueprint. Um, And I think football is starting to get it. And I think Willie is giving a lot more access than the last guy, my BFF. Um, (laughs) Miss you, Dana. (laughs) But you're seeing it. And I think you're going to keep seeing it. Um, There's more excitement around football. If you could have had last year's schedule with this year's off-season excitement, I think you would have pack that stadium a lot more than you did this schedule you're not going to pack it yeah and you're starting over and and who knows the fan excitement going into this i'm not sure um you're not hearing like y'all said about rise about season tickets they're kind of just uh hoping you forget well that's that's another point at this point last year they kept having the, the regular emails about how many season tickets they've accumulated and this and that. Uh, obviously, we you mentioned that schedule and that hype there was just about being in the Big 12. 
Um, and to be honest, like just the first games ever in the Big 12 Conference and obviously that big one that they had in October against Texas was a lot of the reason for that buzz. And this year there just hasn't been those update, updates on season tickets. But I think when you think of Chris Pesman's legacy, it'll, it'll kind of be like that. A lot of untapped potential. I feel like under his tenure, they never necessarily reached what could have been their ceiling. And just look of, look at it. And football, when they went 11-1 and one in 2021, they had momentum. It looked like they had some buzz, and they followed it up with a disappointing 7-5 uh, and five season. And, and then we all know what happened the year after. It's been a lot of reactionary rather than, than being proactive. And I think ultimately that will be what Chris Pesman's tenure as athletic director at U of H will be.